For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Atwell's Outdoors with me, Mike. Some of you guys a bit of a review video on a tent from Atwell. So with me here today, I've got the Atwell Montana 6PE. So for those who've kind of known of uh, Atwell for a long period of time, the Montana is a very iconic name in their whole collection. You know, it's been easily in their range for over sort of 15 years and was very much kind of the pinnacle of what Atwell are all about. So with me today, we've kind of got the newest and latest version of the Atwell. Uh, Montana. Now it's a bit different probably in terms of designs but the main core kind of features of it in terms of space, spec uh, and sort of just oozes quality is still pretty much in its DNA. So with we here we've got a slightly different bit, different look. One thing that was always good about the Montana is the fact that you had a really nice internal living here in a decent sort of size. That's no different with the new 6PE. So what we've got really is a classic kind of 6,000 mil high slit head, about 150 denier. So really nice, robust, but very waterproof tent itself. Traditional kind of steel poles as well. So there's not many steel pole tents on the market, and especially Outwell, probably the only company who really do it, left over, especially when we're talking like a really nice premium collection. So Outwell kind of do their kind of flagship range. Uh, and some of the features you see on the model here is something you don't really see from other brands elsewhere that still kind of do the steel pole style. Which surprised me actually is quite simple and easy to pitch. We've done our own Atwell's pitching video. It took me the best part of about sort of 18, 19 minutes on my own. So something this big, maybe it's me knowing what I'm doing, um, it's quite surprising how simplistic it really was. It's definitely something with the size. It helps if you've got a second pair of hands just for feeding the poles and actually bearing the weight of it. And certainly if it's a windy day, there's sort of left to go wrong, you tend to be more in control of it. So, but it can, as you've seen, um, can be pitched by one person if need be. What we've got really is again, nice steel poles. The steel poles are actually separate in comparison to the, the sort of the over ridge. Um, those you can insert afterwards, put the steel uprights in and then go from there. The joys of it is that actually all the poles are the same length. So it doesn't really make a difference on what goes where. Very easy to distinguish what, you know, what, what is meant to be in what slot. The only difference being is that one on where for this kind of little side part here has a little kind of, um, kind of plastic part in for this extra fiberglass pole that fits in. That's probably the only one that actually is obviously distinguishedly different from the rest. The side pod gives you a little bit more of a sort of a storage space inside. So you can use this ideally for sort of um, putting wet and dry, you know, wet shoes in there or use it like a little wardrobe. Thing like you can put like a little toilet in there as well and have that as kind of your little base so you haven't got to go all the way to the main block if you've got young kids and got an accident, for example. This door is also worth mentioning is actually uh, not only is it kind of a, a sealing unit with a ground sheet that you can take in or take out and it rises up to kind of give a phoning, sewing ground sheet feel, but it can also double act as a door. And there's no reason you couldn't buy some additional king poles and bring that out to make a little bit more of a mini canopy as well. We've got Outwell's kind of very premium um, kind of material and it's slightly embossed as well, just to kind of ooze a bit more. And it sits in Outwell's premium collection as well. We see these beautiful kind of tinted windows, so you get sort of great visibility from the inside looking out. But failing out when you almost from the outside looking in, you don't necessarily see much detail, it's more in kind of shapes. But we've got zip up curtains on the inside to get that ultimate amount of privacy when you want to. Such features that Outwell kind of kind of renowned for is their kind of um, steel pole system where essentially it's got kind of like wind tested ties. So this is actually designed to bring the fabric nice and tight to the actual framework. Uh, means that when you actually pull it on with the guy around, you're pulling the frame and the material together. So again, it's a bit more structure and some really only Outwell do. You can just Velcro around quite nice and neatly. You've got storm straps on the front and the back to get great tension into the roof. And what you also see as well is that it's very easy to clip on and off and can quite easily be adjusted. On the round the sides, you've got kind of this kind of floating guy line kind of system where you can also see the main kind of trip hazard points. Um, and yet you've got this really nice kind of tonal uh, kind of top end guy point that matches the fabric. I quite like how the aluminous sort of bottom end just matches the trim as well on the actual Monta Montana. So it's a small little details I think that do make a nice difference. Other things to mention are things like there's lots of ventilation points throughout the actual tent itself. So you've got low level ventilation points beneath the windows to help circulate for there. There's a really nice big uh, mesh uh, back section as well, which we'll come to later on in the video, 
um, for the terms of airflow. From the front, we've almost got like this kind of canopy that comes out to it. Now, what this enables you to do is kind of have that kind of rain safe door directly through the front. You've got a little bit of a shelter so you can come and go and please, you don't have to worry about the rain dripping down and going into the main tent itself. It's almost worth mentioning that it essentially it's kind of almost two zones, we'll call it three. You've got a really generous living area, a sleeping area back, and then that little side pod. There is the option to buy an additional kind of universal awning, um, which we've kind of done some videos on. You can check it out. We've used this model in the range, I believe, as well. So actually, the universal kind of awning actually clips onto this point back here, comes forward, and closes that kind of front canopy. So it's a way to kind of almost make it a free zone tent, having your whole kind of canopy section, which is enclosed, living and sleeping all in one tent, but makes it more of a modular design. So you're going to wait for a short period of time, you just put the main tent, and it, or you know, you're setting up, for example, do that when you need to. When the weather turns a bit nicer, then you can go down the lines of actually enclosing it when you want to do. Other things to mention is literally around the bottom, we've got lots of webbing straps, so it makes it easy to get additional tension onto the point and get it looking taut. All of the guide, uh, sort of ringing pin systems at the bottom have really a long kind of um, webbing straps. So it means it's easy to get the actual pin in the base, which tends to be a big bugbear. And then you can also tension it in to get the torsion there as well. Clips are also supplied along with kind of the wind structs here, um, just to kind of, again, bring that fabric nice and taut to it as well. And they, what kind of Outwell tends to do is reinforce any main tension points as well, just to make sure you've got longevity in there. Coming to the front panel now, we've got this really nice kind of big door. The door's almost split in half and a half scenario. So with this, I like the flexibility. You can sort of roll it from right to left or left to right, depending on what you're really trying to do. You've also got four zip pullers in total. So you can create a little kind of veranda kind of effect with the front door, just merely fold it over. And you've got a full frontal mesh door located behind that as well to have maximum amount of airflow. So for the sake of the video, what I'm gonna kind of probably do is we'll kind of roll it back towards the right section. So there are little ties, little tabs located on either side. So you can roll that door back. Like I said, I would be halfway and have that as an entrance, or as I'm about to do now, kind of open it fully up. So that would be the halfway point. And again, you can leave your sort of mesh door in there. Failing that. We'll open it up fully. Now, because the zips go all the way down to the bottom, you can almost kind of take it down and open the canopy up fully. So I'm a bit, a bit lazy. Rather than roll it across, I'm just going to fold it and then leave it to rest and almost tuck it inside the tent. So by folding it like so, from here, I can lob that just inside. So we've still got the full kind of uh, front door that's fully open and you can see this entire sort of mesh door located here. Again, you've got the flexibility that you can kind of open it from left to right or right to left, but you've got a bug-free barrier while still retaining you know, a bit of cover. So the way it does turn and the doors open and expose as we have it here, rain's not going to suddenly come driving into the actual uh, main part of the tent itself. But I'll tell you what, let's kind of bring the camera around, go a look inside the Montana and talk for a load more features that it's got built into it. So now we kind of swung the camera around, you can kind of get a bit more of a feel for the suit the front. It's quite empty. So the joys of this actually is there is because you've got this weird, this big open panel to great into the actual tent itself. Now, like I said before, you can kind of rock it from one side to the other. Same. 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 Around the actual uh, tent itself. What I'm going to do again is get on the kind of more lazier side. I'll bring that fully over. What happens is this bottom zip can actually come physically off. So we can And that then allows you to drop this whole section by untoggling it down. 
what you find is you actually then got a trip free access in to the actual tent itself and again from a detailed point of view there's a little bit of uh, PVC on the underside of the tip just to make sure when it's on the ground you don't forget all the blood going directly into the actual uh, zip itself and kind of ruining it as such. Now we're kind of in the kind of main kind of sort of living section. You can see there's also plenty of room in here. It's really quite sort of big in that sense that if you look a bit in its kind of its range, so it sits inside so like the uh, the Mont uh, or the uh, Colorado, it's actually got the biggest kind of living spaces inside. And so with the building the panels the centre, you can make it bigger, uh, make it a little bit more fully usable than something like the Mont. But it's kind of each to their own. You kind of choose what you like in terms of space and features. Headroom wise is quite decent, you know, I'm about six foot two. You stand up certainly in the middle here quite happily. You get to the first park in a little bit, the nose from you expect of any kind of other content you can cross. The thing I do like in here is the sheer level of you know, detail that each of built into it. So you've got people sort of curtain because you don't really tend to see too much of how the tall decks at least. It's a much more thorough way of doing it, easier to do, puts better coverage and then gives you the possibility to bring it down a little bit kind of halfway. So you've still got a little bit of uh, sort of view on the outside, but the privacy down below. Beneath all of the windows, we've also got a kind of a mesh uh, ventilation point. Again, to kind of increase airflow and maximise sort of airflow in here to sort of reduce condensation down a bit. So we've got that either side that's kind of the same on both ends. I should take a step back. We then actually then got a mesh door on the other side. That's the mesh door inside to that kind of little uh, sort of storage area. I do a bit to be fair. We'll come to the storage section in just a second. I'm going to walk away back and actually take. And the back here we've got a really nice sort of freeboard, freeboard bed. Each section is 180 in terms of width. It's a slightly deeper depth than two meters further. So these are ambassador bedrooms. Joining it means that this will have deeper depth. Things like camp beds, um, sort of high rise air beds, for example, can actually fit in there properly rather than have to be rotated around. Just because you've got also a bit more of a sculpted back. Storage pockets built into the back section as well, again to make sort of the keys and phones and things like that quite easily accessible. Not in the back, but also in the front of the bedrooms, with its own kind of key electric point into the bedroom as well, so you can get your link, you can charge your phone up next to you in the Really nice big mesh from the back here allows you not only to plug in the phone, it's a spot for kids on the campsite, you can get groups of people on the site, it's a circulation barrier as well. It's also a spot to get the rear drives to go along the top. Traditionally, I'd probably say the left hand side is more of the kind of your kids' bedroom, whereas the right hand side is probably more predominantly designed for your master. They're both the same size, the reason being is that this side has our last feature of a brick and quiet bedroom. A brick and quiet bedroom is basically a magnetic system that means you can kind of come and go into the door and get the privacy without having to use a zip. So, again, a bit quieter. So so if you find your last necessarily in the bed, you don't to be the out. You can kind of come and go as you see fit. Honestly, it's not that cool. Shot of fun. You've got a picture of all the things that work in the bedrooms. Main support, you want to do with it. In 
living area was with two means points for entry on this side or the same place on the other side. As we're walking down to this small section here as well, there's a branches coming forward. Always the best way of doing it. So, I'm going to feel a bit of the feel. So, as we come into this sort of side pod, we've obviously you can got curtains and windows in there. So, if you wanted that completely kind of no one to see, you can bring the curtains down. It's just located on the top there, quite nice and neatly. There's a ground sheet supplied with it, or you can have it bare like I have it here. The ground sheet, like I said, actually toggles up um, quite nice and neatly. So, it feels like a sewn in ground sheet, but you've got the flexibility, you can remove it. The curtains itself just toggle directly down and there's a zip section as well. And there's a mesh door located here which you can see is really quite nice and fine. Um, but really nice kind of addition. And let's just open her up. Here we go. So it works really well and you can see the toggle points are located here just for that ground sheet to rise up quite nice and neatly which I said comes with it. But you can get the privacy when you want to. On the door section again you can also get the curtain built into that section here so that can again go fully up so you can have everything completely enclosed you can see the vents beneath the kind of window as well to help with airflow and then from the bedroom side of things we've got obviously that nice dark material to hopefully give you a sort of a, a bit more of a lie-in it doesn't wake you up with the early morning lights but the storage pockets inside and out give a bit more flexibility and then that's kind of the mesh we're talking about so you can now close that externally all kind of internally so you can see obviously on the campsite where necessarily the kids are and you can see again the, the zip dividers with the kind of flap along the bottom mesh door on the side but you get a really nice kind of view around the campsite and like i said with that kind of ability of that canopy at the front gives you enough coverage as that kind of sloping door comes back a little bit you've got a bit more protection from there as you kind of come out and around you can kind of again see kind of the in its own way you see how that kind of front part sort of slopes forward to give you that sort of extra bit of coverage and again that low level ventilation points with the mesh door on that side around the back we can kind of see probably actually a little bit more of a boxy kind of style at the back to increase that kind of back uh, panel to help for air beds and camp beds as previously mentioned and we've got the mesh fully up there which can actually sort of physically zip down paying that you can bring it out and kind of have the sort of ventilation without having to have the physical visual you know ness should we say um into the actual tent itself but you see how tall that roof is and again that back guy it really does have to keep that looking really nice and sharp and then we've got our little storage pod built onto it very easy to pitch again as seen kind of from our uh, pitching videos but all in all it's a really nice alternative, especially for the person who doesn't really want to go down lines of an air, more classic kind of pool, but still wants that high level of features, high level of spec that we can with. So I suppose it's maybe someone who's possibly had, not say a problem with air, but an alternative to air. Other things that you see on certain air, like the quality of the shorts, you know, brand, is the ability of their foot track system. So the foot track system is a kind of hanging point on here, which means you can have two hands as a lantern or storage organizers, and simply it's a huge point on the arm, which is to flip on and flip off. So it means it's very easy to kind of create a hanging point for the lantern, run the cable down to your cable entry point. So now, this actually foot track system is based on the middle pole and also on kind of the front pole where the door is. So Again, you can pick and choose how you want to use it or have some accessories going between it, so it works really quite nicely. For more information on the Montana, you more like check the link below this video. It'll take you straight through to the website where we've got more information for things like pack sizes, uh, pack weights, floor dimensions. It's worth saying it actually comes in two pack bags, so one for the actual canopy, uh, and the ground sheet is also in, and then one for the poles. It's a more manageable weight rather than one big bag. You've got two a bit more easier to carry. Um, Units and for a manageable piece of the camp or the rest of the camp. It's nice to see kind of a traditional pole tent, there's nothing left really, but with all the features you want to new, and certainly from a price point of view, it's not cheap. Certainly, with the price of steel and everything at the moment, you know, it's understandable, not what it was five, ten years ago, but it's still got its own kind of point in the marketplace, 
and it's still an end consumer who still wants to kind of have that traditional poll and say, you know, I've never really been involved in the world, but it's the way, you know, you get what you get, and it's still a great sort of structural science. So, yeah, so any more questions for you, so please let us know. Um, well, that's kind of our little video review on the Atwell Montana 6PE.